Today, I want to talk a little bit about how to handle complexity as a leader. So the other day, I was getting coffee with a friend of mine and we were catching up. You see, he works at a large tech company and he's in a product leadership role and he's been feeling really, really stressed out. He was telling me all about how every single day he was dealing with fires, lots of different issues, and it got to the point where basically every waking minute of the day was being spent thinking about work. When he wasn't working on his computer, he was thinking about it in the shower, going for a walk, spending time with his partner, just consuming his entire experience. Here's what I told him, and here's what I'll share with you in the hopes that this will help someone who's in a similar position, whether you're at a larger company or you're a leader at a small but growing organization. So the first thing to understand is the reason there's the stress is mounting over time as things evolve is because you're dealing with a system that increases in complexity. That's just the nature of what we do when we're growing businesses. Every new teammate that joins, every new customer, every new product or service, it increases complexity in the system to the point where it's impossible for you to keep it all in your head given your current vantage point. What this ends up producing is a sense that everything's a fire, everything's an emergency, everything's urgent, and you're running from issue to issue. No surprise where you start ending up with a case of feeling stressed out, overwhelmed, and eventually burned out. So the first thing to understand is this is normal, this is natural, this is the way of things. Complexity naturally grows as businesses grow. The second thing to understand is that you were built for this. And what I mean by that is as a complex biological system, our key feature is our ability to adapt, our ability to respond to complexity, respond to our environment and the demands that they throw on us. Sometimes we forget about this. Sometimes we think there's no way I can handle my current situation. I'm feeling stuck. There's no possibility that I can see ahead of me. And so we just work and work and work because we're convinced that just putting more effort into our current way of working is going to be what solves this issue for us. But it's important to slow down, take a step back and realize that what got me here is not what's gonna get me there. So the saying goes. In other words, the playbooks that we follow to get to our current position might not be what we need to follow in order to advance to the next level. What I'm just describing here is adaptation. So when we forget about our ability to adapt, that's what gets us stuck. That's what gets us running into the same routines in the same plays. So take a moment to remember that your chief skill is to adapt, is to look at the environment, gain awareness, and then figure out how to respond so that you can move forward. And then the last thing I'll offer you is a few practical ideas on how to handle increasing complexity once you've gotten to the point where you realize that's the nature of the problem and that you're reminding yourself or you've reminded yourself that you have the ability to adapt. First thing, see the system. Zoom out sufficiently so you see how work actually gets done on your team or your organization. Take a look at how goals are created, how feedback is exchanged, how help is requested between people. What are the lines and the relationships between different teammates or different teams in the same organization? What you might find is that there's a mess. And the reason for that is because we often create our ways of working in a very unconscious way. We don't bother to talk about it explicitly. We don't design the experience. We just kind of get together, bring our own patterns and just let them all just fit into one another in this haphazard way. Spend the time to zoom out and see the system. How is it really functioning? It's like you're opening up the hood of your car and starting to deconstruct the engine of the car, one that you didn't actually design yourself. Step two is to figure out, well, how do I actually want to create our ways of working together? How do I want communication to flow? Is there too much dependence happening? Like, for example, if you're a leader who has 10 direct reports, that's probably too many. Those reports are going to demand way too much of your attention and take you away from your ability to look at the system, think strategically, create vision, 
um, and give feedback so that the system operates properly. Really thoughtfully spend some time and design the engine, the system that is responsible for getting work done. This is something that is an ongoing practice, by the way. It's not something that you can do once and then you're finished with it. Because remember, complexity is ongoing. It never ends. So neither should this work. You always have to remember to zoom out and always see the system. And if you don't see the full system, you have to zoom out even more. This brings me to my last point. It's scary to do this. One reason it's scary is because the more you zoom out, the more indirect the relationship becomes between your actions and the output of the business. You can no longer directly influence code, design, marketing, right? You're not doing this work anymore. To get to this level of abstraction where you're designing the system but not doing the actual work can be very scary for folks. But we have to remember that that's our job. Our job is to manage the system that produces the work, not doing the work ourselves, especially as complexity grows. One of the things that I see a lot of people have trouble with is they got into leadership because they were really, really good at a specific field. Maybe they're a star designer or engineer, product manager, salesperson, and they've been trained to you know, have this identity as being excellent in that field. They get the dopamine hit every time they do well. That's something that is really, really hard to untrain. So when you notice that impulse to go and dive in and get your hands dirty and do the ground level work, you have to catch that and then squash it when it comes up. Because remember, your role as a leader is always changing. And if you fall back into those modes that make you feel good at the moment, you're actually doing a disservice to both the team and the business. Hope these ideas on how to manage increasing complexity as a leader are helpful to you. Leave a comment, a like, subscribe, and look out for the next one. Thanks a lot.